Roy Goodman, host of Higher Education Today, a production of the University of the District of Columbia. Welcome back to the education program that connects you to contemporary issues, people, and institutions involved in the world of higher education. Today, we'll be talking about education and music in South Africa. The Honorable Ibrahim Rasool is the ambassador of South Africa to the United States. He is a former premier of the Western Cape who earned his diploma in education from the University of Cape Town. Ambassador Rasool and I first met 20 years ago at the University of the Western Cape in Belleville. Fuzi Malasela is a singer-songwriter from the Mamalodi Township in South Africa. Known as The Voice, his CDs include Guiding Star and Say Africa. He performed at the World Cup kickoff concert in Soweto and appeared in the film Amandla, A Revolution in Four-Part Harmony. Welcome to both of you. Mm, thanks Thank you so much. Well, Thank you. well, thanks again for coming on. Mr. Ambassador, if we could start with you, mm. maybe you could say a word or two, if you wouldn't mind, about an overview of the South African education system. Look, I think to understand the skills crisis, the unemployability of so many of our youth today, and the terrible unemployment figure of almost 30% in South Africa that we have today, it goes right back to that education crisis. If you were a young black student growing up in Soweto, Mamalodi, or wherever, you would not have had the chance for a decent education based on maths, science, even music, um, for that matter. And if you were to then understand that that was not what blacks were prepared for, then it should take about two or three generations simply to get the first product literate in maths and science and um, a range of other hard subjects that prepares them for the world that we're in today. That's the crisis of education. Apartheid was more than separating people. It was about dispossessing people, both of physical assets like land, but also the intellectual assets that could make them compete in the world as it is unfolding today. Well, would you mind saying a word or two about uh, your background as, as, as a kid in terms of your education? And Vuzi, maybe if you could speak also mm. to what your life was like as a young person, that might be helpful to an American audience. Mm. I think that I was probably a lot more fortunate than many other people because I fitted into an in-between category called colored in South Africa who had access to maths, who could push the envelope and get standard grade maths and science, but if they really applied themselves, they could push it even further and get a decent um, education um, out of it. I was also the product of parents who decided that they would rather remain poor, but every additional bit of money should go to getting their children to break the cycle of poverty and get into a university. And because I chose teaching, I had access to a government um, bursary in order to get into education, and then duly I had to apply for a permit, which was an exception to the apartheid rule, to get into a university of my choice, in this case, the University of Cape Town. And, um, and that really are the key moments that I think transformed my life into what it has become. And Fuzi, what was your life like as, as a kid, if you wouldn't mind? Well, uh, for me, of course, I grew up being a happy kid, you know, until I came to uh, really understand what was really happening in 1976 when there was the uprising, you know, in Soweto. I was 11 years old. So apartheid was like, of course, there, but more deeper because of the segregation where they have segregated according uh, to a to a tri to a tri tribal, tribal uh, the Sutus, the Zulus, and all that in different places and so on. So I became a young activist, you know, after 1976, uh, and then also joining the uh, poetry group called Ancestors of Africa and the Congress of South African Writers in '88. So um, I think 1976. That's the thing that really opened my eyes where I started asking questions what was really happening. And that's when my political education started. And since from then, I joined the youth organization under the, the African National Congress. And then, of course, it was really difficult. Yes, I was going to school, love education, but sometimes it was even difficult to understand, you know, why you, you are going to school as uh, you know uh, the ambassador was you know explaining that you know things that you, or the subjects that you were taking whatever you were not prepared that you know mm. this is what you have to take so that in future you should you know be this person and uh, yeah through that activism and all that you know i became quite a lot of in, in trouble with the police and uh, all the time i had to go to the police station before going to school to sign mm. 
uh, you know, a register, and then at school I must sign, and then after school sign off and go back to the police station and sign. And then when I have to go out of Mamelodi Township, maybe with my parents or whatever, to go somewhere, I have to go and ask permission. My parents had to come with me. They even forced me to go to church every Sunday. And that was really too much for me, you know. And that gave me more wings, you know, to really, you know, be active, you know, in the struggle and so on. And were you using your music abilities early on, or how often, how early did you start using your music to advance uh, the cause? Well, I performed quite a lot on political platforms, mm -hmm. and then I got also uh, support from one man who was loved by the people of Mamelodi. We called him the people's doctor, uh, the late Dr. Fabian Ruberu, mm -hmm. uh, together with his wife, who was assassinated mm -hmm. by the forces of the state in the 80s. He is the man who was a mentor and also gave my political education as well. And um, yeah, and as I said, I performed quite a lot on political platforms until I joined the Congress of South African Writers in 88, where I met people like you know, uh, Jawilon Debele, Nadine Kodima, who mm. was more like a, a mother to me, who supported me, you know, in quite a lot of things. So, yeah. Well, I found your music to be powerful. I find your music to be powerful, but also really deep in very profound ways, like at the opening scene of Amandla. Um, I never really understood the significance of that song until I actually saw the movie. Okay. Yeah, I think the subject matter counts, you know, uh, in song uh, to really put the message forward, you know, to really want, what you want to say, you know, to people. Uh, but also, you know, for my, for me, my country, to give hope to our people so that they should not despair, you know, just to, you know, hang on. And I think we did just that. Besides, you know, getting the, the support, you know, of the radio play and so on, so our music was quite well supported and we had quite a lot when we were performing in political rallies and, and cultural, you know, uh, platforms, uh, book launches and so on. And uh, I think, um, yeah, uh, Vusi Matasela's music, you know, it, it's just something that really people, you know, at home, they are really happy with what I'm doing because of I'm highlighting what was really happening, you know, during the time when there was quite a lot of turmoil under apartheid. But not only just politics as well, you know, there are other subjects that are really dearly to us, you know, as people, that we need to honor each other as people and, and move forward. But you know, Vusi is being very modest about the role of his music. It wasn't an adornment at your political rallies. When your education system fails you, when the whole apartheid edifice is based on denigrating blacks yeah. and elevating whites, you've got to find a new well of wisdom, a new well of resolve, right. uh, reserves of hope, something that connects the pride of your past with the hopefulness of the future. And that's what an entire generation of musicians like Vusi Mashlasela did for us in South Africa. That's what a whole series of writers like Njabul and Debele did for us. That's what a whole series of poets like Sandile Dikeni um, and many others did for us. They yeah. roused us, not because they were rebel rousers, but they could teach us that where we came from was a place of pride. Where we are is a test ground, and where we are going to is the New Jerusalem. And that's what the music, the poetry, the culture did in the absence of the formal education. And yeah. that's the dynamism of the music that we hear today. That when the formal education system fails, then it is to the poets and the musicians that you look for your guidance. And that's what we did. That's what made South Africa the so-called miracle that the world applauds. Yeah. And that's also today, especially for the youth, you know, back home, uh, a little bit of concern for me because uh, the youth need to understand that the, the the freedom or the rights that they're enjoying today, they didn't just come by. You know, people fought for and died for. And they need some kind of a cultural revolution yeah. as well. And we are there, you know, to provide that. Yeah. Well, do you think people born after 1994 have the same appreciation for uh, the state of emergency, for instance, that people born in the 60s do? I must say that I have a daughter born in 1991 and a son born in 1999. We've given them names that speak to both the heritages yep. in the kind of Islamic world and the African world. And so my daughter's name is Tahrir, which means to be free, and Tandeka. And my son's name is Tanwir, which means the new light, and Sinetemba, we have hope. But I've made them watch Amandla. 
because I want them to understand the history of the struggle, not in lecture form, but in musical form. In musical form. Because that's what Amandla does. It tells our, and chronicles our history through the evolution of the music. The more militant songs that emerge, the more militant poetry, the hopeful ones in the time of despair, and the, the mournful ones at a time of tragedy. And Amandla captures that. And so it's really a battle to keep your children um, not only informed about the struggle, but rooted in yep. a culture. Because anyone and can, can pick up MTV and Hollywood and understand that to be global culture. But yep. I think ours is so rich that it would be criminal to lose it. Well, I thought, that, and I think that that's right, and what I thought was really interesting about the spirit that you both are talking about is last night. Uh, Vuzi uh, performed, for our viewers who, are, who didn't, weren't able to go last night, Vuzi, you performed at the Hamilton last night, yeah. and I was amazed at the spirit in that room. There were Americans, there were South Africans, there were people from all over the world who came to support you, and I don't even know how many people were there. There were a lot of people there, and in fact, there was a young couple there who I met, they, you interrupted a concert five years earlier mm -hmm. to help him propose to his girlfriend, and now he's married to that uh, woman, and, and they're a couple, and they have a, a baby. They have a one year, yeah. A, a, an daughter. amazing so, story, so the spirit. He came to give me the picture and all that, and I had to baptize the girl with an African name. <laughs> so they again interrupted your concert. <laughs> it was beautiful, and, and I think That's that really captures the spirit. And, yeah. and so, to your point, Mr. Ambassador, about the film Amandla, but that was 10 years ago, I think we now have Vuzi in, in Washington, D.C. in 2012 performing and bringing the same message. So I think that was terrific. Yeah. Maybe if I could ask uh, both of you a little bit about the concept of Ubuntu. And Vuzi, I know you sing about this. Could you say a word or two about what that means a little bit more? Well, Ubuntu, it, 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 it's more about, okay, you are because I am, you know. Uh, but it's not just the one hit wonder, you know. It, it's actually mm. quite a lot of things. And it, it's more about families, you know, in societies. And then to the individual, whatever, maybe that's something that you cannot talk to them about Ubuntu, the, those who are like individuals and things like that. But uh, Ubuntu is a gift mm. you know, from Africa, yeah. and I'm proud to say that. Yeah. Ubuntu, it's, it, it's a gift from the bona fide of time uh, because it's a concept actually that Westerners still have to learn and understand it and live it to the fullest because Ubuntu is all about everyday's kindness, about helpfulness, it, it's about love, empathy, sympathy, uh, forgiveness, reconciliation, uh, it's, it's about unity and it's also about uh, redistribution. Uh, I'm talking about redistributions of morals, mm. knowledge, and skills. Yeah. Because the world right now it's evolving. You know, I'm thinking in Africa we used to like do, have everything whatever, but now because of droughts and things like that, people here some some of them have the, the knowledge. You know, to can come and help Africa to tell us, oh, you can plant these you know seeds and everything sort of because of the drought, and then you can you know have food and by this way whatever. So th those skills and everything whatever we need to come together and honor each other and help you know to live. So Ubuntu is just actually the law for all of us to live with it. And if you really want to enjoy to live. In this world, you have to be human. You have to be human, and Ubuntu is for you. You know what Vusi does in spreading the message of Ubuntu through culture and music. As ambassador, we adopt the diplomacy of Ubuntu. It is saying that South Africa has more than gold to sell to the USA, more than platinum, more than uranium, more than Mercedes-Benz C-classes and oranges and fruit and wine and all of those kind of things. We have something so precious that in my humble opinion, the USA requires. It's the ability to be human. It's the That's ability right. to recognize the human, the divine and the spiritual in the other. That once you recognize, as Mandela recognized in the clerk, that as oppressive as the system was that the clerk represented, there was a human essence in the Africana and that to access it, you needed to forgive and to reconcile and to bring them into the reconstruction. 
That's the so-called South African miracle. It is to do the unexpected, to act with great resolves of generosity because you can put yourself in the shoes of the other. And we often find that that's a capacity that in the traditional North and West has been lost. Everything is so transactional that you don't deal with the divine, the spiritual, and the human in the other. Everything is so law-driven that you forget the spirit of human interactions. And I think that that really is what the music of South Africa is about. What we do with words, they do with notes. And can you say a word or two about the Truth and Reconciliation Commission? Um, obviously, I think we all understand that who are sitting on the set, but a lot of Americans don't really understand exactly what happened in terms of forgiving some very serious crimes on the part of a lot of people in South Africa. I think the, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission is probably the high point of Ubuntu in action. Yep. Imagine someone jailed for 27 years comes out and grants amnesty and forgiveness to his jailer. Imagine the one, the mother, who simply wants to find the remains of a dead child, tortured and butchered to death by an apartheid security branch um, official. Goes to the security branch official and says, I don't want revenge. Take me to where you have buried or disposed of my son, yeah. and then I will forgive you. If you can imagine that, and if you can imagine the chairperson of the commission collapsing on the table in tears, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, just with the horror of what was done, and then seconds later, the victim says, but I forgive you. And that, I think, is the most amazing bargain. It is breaking completely with the Western tradition of Nuremberg trials. Mm. That is the world a better place because we have avenged the events of World War II? Or is the world held together in equilibrium? Is there harmony or equilibrium? In South Africa, we are moving slowly but surely towards harmony. The world is still kept together in equilibrium. If you have the atom bomb, we must have it in order to guarantee that we don't fight each other. Because that, it's, it's, it's the processes that give rise to it. And South Africa, I think, pioneered a completely different way of being human. Yeah, and reconciliation was a really great thing to happen, as also it was planted by a man who lived in South Africa and planted that seed of reconciliation, you know, uh, um, um, Mahatma Gandhi. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, reconciliation actually it is that part of Ubuntu, that gift from Ubuntu, that reminds us that you know we need to wear forgiveness as a crown. Mm. Well, it's funny you raise that because uh, Mahatma, Mahatma Gandhi's grandson was on the show uh, last year, and as okay. we were preparing for the segment, one of the things that was really interesting was he made the case that when he was a little boy, he was with his grandfather, and he was at the meeting when his grandfather was trying to speak, and none other than Nelson Mandela prevented him from speaking. This is before, of course, when Mandela was running the Youth League. And it was a fascinating discussion. And Arun Gandhi makes the case that what happens is that Mandela eventually came around to, to, to Gandhi's mm. grandfather's view of, of all of this, but didn't look at that as a young man. But, wow. but you see, that's the wonder of, of a Nelson Mandela, the wonder of an Oliver Tambo, of a Lutuli, a Steve Biko. They all start off with all the human frailties and biases and so forth that can be in the world. And then through suffering, they don't only plot how to make the world better, they start off by making themselves different. Yeah. And that is the key to Ubuntu, that's the key to being African. You have to look it, into the innermost of yourself. That's a you can't change the world if you are not prepared to change yourself. And spinning is not changing yourself. It is the ability genuinely to say, I was wrong. And Mandela tells the self-deprecating story about how he broke up meetings of those he disagreed with until he realized sitting in jail that he was wrong. And that he then changed himself, asked for forgiveness, and became the best president that the world has ever seen. And that's the lesson that I think South Africa and Africa offers the world. 
What do you think universities in South Africa should be doing right now to, to transform the situation on the ground? I think universities probably have a dilemma. On the one hand, the students, their parents, the government and society requires them to create jobs, to give people hard skills with which to go out into the world and be a good engineer, a doctor, a scientist, a lawyer or whatever the case may be. We have learned the values of humanities, of the arts, because we want rounded, good human beings rooted in the philosophy and wisdom of Ubuntu. And so how do you balance the hard skills that the university must deliver with the soft skills to be human? Because an engineer without Ubuntu is not going to build bridges that will make life flow, will connect people and, um, and, and be safe for people. The same with doctors. You can have the best medical brain, but if you don't have empathy, you lose something. And so in South Africa, the debate about um, universities is about how to balance the two. Fair enough. And speaking of balance, I think uh, we're going to say a quick goodbye to you, Vuzi, for a half a second, because I know you, were, you have agreed to sing a song for us today. So we're going to say thank you very much for coming on the show uh, today. Uh, and what song do you think you would like to sing today? Uh, well, I'll, 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 t I'll sing uh, the song that also touches, you know, that the subject of Ubuntu. And then also, maybe for that, I'd also just like to mention that, you know, uh, as, you know, everybody loves, you know, education and all that, I, I wanted also to be in college or university. I wanted to become a doctor or a, a, pre a, a preacher, you know, a priest. But somebody told me that, but you are doing it because you are preaching with your music and also healing with your music. And I'm very much thankful that this country, because of the extension of the people with what we do when we come here and then give this you know, motivational speech and everything, whatever, through my activism and the music, the University of Michigan honored me by giving me the uh, Martin Luther King, Caesar Shivers, Rosa Parks, visiting, visiting professorship award uh, this January. And I'm very much thankful for that. Well, you deserve it. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank so we're going to let you set up for the guitar. And thank Mr. You. Ambassador, I've got one quick question for you. So thank you, Vuzi. And uh, Mr. Ambassador, the only question I wanted to ask you was um, the, the issue of, of your favorite musicians. And I, and I realize I don't want to embarrass you in front of Vuzi, um, your second favorite musician in South <laughs> Africa. <laughs> no, I must say that I've, I've mm -hmm. expressed the great appreciation that I have for Vuzi's generation of musicians led by someone like Vuzi Machlas Ella himself, and I've told you why that is. But you know, in the broad genre of South African jazz, which is uncomplicated, really wonderful, it speaks to us, there's a little bias that I have down in Cape Town, um, where the slaves added enormously to jazz, giving a unique Cape jazz with great exponents like Abdullah Ibrahim, Robbie Jansen, Basil Mannenberg could see, and um, it connects again that entire slave history and our hope for the future and the desire to integrate with not only the rest of South Africa and Africa, but the world. And so um, certainly I think we have some of the most wonderful musicians that I've come to know other than Vusi and the three that I've mentioned. Um, Jimmy Dludlu is a great friend from Mozambique, part of that entire African drive. And so all in all, I think South Africa is blessed that it has talent, with heart. Well, I think that that's a fair comment. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you very much. If you would like additional information about Vuzi Malasela or Ambassador Ibrahim Rasul, please visit vuzimalasela.com or saembassy.org. If you have comments or suggestions about higher education today, please send an email to our viewer mailbox at highereducationtoday at topcolleges.com. Thank you for watching. We will continue to bring you quality discussions about important matters in today's college and university world. After Vuzi's song, please join me again for another edition of Higher Education Today. I'm Stephen Roy Goodman, and you've been watching Higher Education Today. We cross Zimbabwe's border 
flew over the dry fields of my homeland, coming into Joburg. The suntan swimming pools and the sweat to shirts, airports and railway stations, stranded with a rock pack and guitar. The languages and the places change And the sky has different stars I may be walking in the streets Of a city called London By the dust on my boots and the rhythm of my feet And my heartbeat say Africa I may be walking in the streets Of a city called Amsterdam By the dust on my boots and the rhythm of my feet And my heartbeat say Africa Say Africa, say Africa, say Africa, say Africa. Sticks and stones and the UN loan and the passport controls for countries that don't exist. It's a big world, they have their own problems, everyone. And there's gold in that clenched feast. People ask me where I'm from, I say Mami Lodi Township. In a city called Twani, meaning we are the same. I have a friend who's a great musician and is from Ebayi, near King Williamstown. You know where Steve Biko was born? I have a friend who's a great musician and is from Mbaye, oh yes, near King Williamstown. You know where Steve Biko was born? You might have read us in the film about the Africa. You might have read us in the film about Africa. You know, it's a big continent with a great gift of Ubuntu. I may be walking in the streets of a city called London, but the dust on my boots and the rhythm of my feet and my heartbeat say Africa. I may be walking in the streets of New York, yeah, but the dust on my boots and the rhythm of my feet and my heartbeat say Africa. Say Africa, say Africa, say Africa, say Africa, say Africa, Africa. Good mama, good mama. Oh, say Africa, say Africa, say Africa.